In sports, it used to be that once you got a big lead, you kept it. But in today's world, the amount of teams surrendering late leads or huge comebacks actually being pulled off are more and more commonplace, and in fact, almost becoming the norm. But what is the cause of this? Is it simply a correlation of results that make us think there is an underlying reason? And is that reason a bit more sinister than we think? Well, we're about to find out. First, let's take a quick look at the current examples of monumental comeback wins and then examine the period of time before that to make sure what's happened recently aren't anomalies. It's worth noting that huge comebacks have occurred in every single major North American sport in the playoffs or championship game within the last five years. In 2016, the Cubs erased a 3-1 deficit. The Cavaliers did the same thing against the Warriors. The Patriots erased a 25-second half lead over the Falcons. In 2014, the Kings were down 0-3 to the Sharks and then came back and won the Cup. Alabama overcame a 17-point deficit in the National Championship game. And there are numerous other examples, but this is just in the last four years. Absurd. Why are teams coughing up leads like a coal miner smoking his 12th cigarette of the day? And before we get into the possible causes, though, let's look at how infrequent these types of things happened before this recent period. From 1984 to 1999, in the NFL, all you saw were blowouts, with 13 of the 16 superb owls in that time period being decided by 10 points or more. However, since 99, 11 of the 18 games have been decided by a touchdown or less, with three games you could only even call blowouts. That first Seattle game, though, that was done from the start. Before 2004, no team had ever come back from a 3-0 deficit in baseball and erasing a 3-1 deficit was unheard of, with it only happening five times in the World Series in the history of baseball and seven times in the LCS, with five of those comebacks happening since 2003. In hockey, 3-0 comebacks have happened, but you've also seen eight seeds beating number one seeds and getting all the way to the finals or the cup itself within the last six years. And NBA basketball probably has the least examples of huge comebacks, but historically getting into a 3-1 hole was a death sentence, and it never happened in the finals before 2016. There have only been 11 total 3-1 comebacks, and three of them have happened in the last three years. And before that, there were none in a nine-year period. And lastly, in the college championship game, you have had a slew of blowouts over the last 26 years, with 15 of them being full-on blowouts. However, in four of the last five years, the games have come down to the final play. So what is the cause of these recent close games and comebacks? Are these games rigged? We're going to look at the variety and validity of a number of theories and figure out if the teams that blew it had a little outside help. The first thing I want to examine is the refing and umpiring in these remarkable comebacks. I really want to focus on the examples I laid out in the opening segment of this video. Let's start with last year's Super Bowl in which the Patriots scored 31 unanswered points in the second half. Let's compare how and what penalties were called in the first half and the second. In the first half of the game, seven penalties were called, two of them called on New England for holding. The rest were on the Falcons. In the second half, when trailing 21-3 and 28-3, New England received penalties for offensive and defensive holding. During a key second half drive, Atlanta up 28-9, got a penalty for holding while in field goal range and ended up punting. Of course, up 28-20, Atlanta again committed a hold that took them well out of field goal range and New England tied it up. The only other penalty in the second half was for illegal touching by Gostowski, and that occurred after New England scored their first TD on the onside kick. So basically, once the comeback started, New England didn't get called once for a penalty, and there were plenty of opportunities for them to get called, like this pick play on the two-point conversion and this chop block. Looking suspicious? Now let's look at Alabama versus Georgia. I want to focus on the judgment penalties versus illegal substitution and things like that. Alabama got only one holding call in the first half. In the second half, the refs clearly missed a defensive offsides call. That cost Georgia the ball deep in Alabama territory. That's clearly pathetic refing. Also in the second half, the refs missed an obvious face mask. The only penalty Alabama would get in the second half was for unsportsmanlike conduct. Georgia got a drive extending PI call and got popped for a face mask. But from here, nothing else was called. No holding calls, 
nothing. Looks like the refs swallowed their whistles. Now for baseball, you can argue that technology makes the strike zone more honest and everyone knows basketball is rigged. I don't even need to go there as the Draymond suspension contributed to the Cavs winning game five. But in these two football games, you can't really pin everything on the refs and there is really nothing overt in the key moments. But the stage had been set. Consider the ref argument as exhibit A, but blaming the refs is an easy one. The refs don't send in the plays on the field. Remember that for later. Fatigue and injuries. Is fatigue really a factor in blowing leads? When the Sharks lost to the Kings in the first round in 2014, you could definitely tell they were out of gas. The Kings were down 0-3 and then reeled off four straight wins of three goals or more and capped the series with a 5-1 blowout win in Game 7. Incidentally, Mike Richards and Jeff Carter also pulled off a 0-3 comeback with the Flyers in 2010. You can argue that the Warriors ran out of gas versus the Cavs as Steph Curry was banged up headed into the finals and you saw what they did to the Cavs the next year when they were healthy. Of course they had Kevin Durant. There were no significant injuries in the Cubs coming back versus the Indians and you could argue that the Cubs were suffering more from fatigue than the Indians as Chapman was out there on fumes. And of course in football, defenses get tired, but you really can't say it's a lack of conditioning, it's the lack of your offense keeping the ball. I think what's a bigger effect on possible outcomes of games are outright choking and poor decision making. In almost every one of these epic collapses, you can isolate a few plays that really did not work out for the choking party, especially in the Falcons and their mismanagement while in field goal range. And in the cubs indian series you could argue that joe madden and the cubs made more managerial mistakes than the indians and still somehow won did the warriors choke or was missing draymond in game five and the refing in game six which was called out by steph curry and his wife more of a factor and the sharks definitely choked so this isn't a universal thing it's mixed across the board as to what choking really is but in terms of rigging, I don't think any team intentionally wants to lose. Choking happens, but it isn't on purpose. But how about luck, atmosphere, and reality TV? Okay, I lumped these into one category, but I think all these contribute to these epic comebacks. No doubt luck plays a huge factor in all of this. I mean, look at this damn catch for crying out loud. But it can't be the sole thing, and luck can certainly not be forced or rigged though God has intentionally cursed the Browns for some reason. The atmosphere of the game and the crowd can help along outcomes of games, and I think our reality TV culture does urge the teams to put on a good show in front of us, but I honestly don't think any of these factors can be forced. Which leads me to my last two key factors on comebacks and what I think are the real reasons, not nefarious interference adjustments and analytics there has never been more data available to a coach in the history of mankind than in the era we live in today and in the nfl you see coaches carrying tablets and qbs looking at printouts of plays that just happened i'm willing to bet that the sideline information capabilities that they have now are even better than what the u.s military has in combat theater except the only thing dying out on the field is hopes and dreams you look at UGA versus Alabama, clearly Saban adjusted by bringing in the freshman QB. He saw that Georgia had everyone up front and was daring them to throw the deep ball. And you damn well know he found someone that could. With the Cavs and Warriors, you saw the Cavs shift to actually believing they could play defense and Kyrie getting more involved in the offense. And luckily for LeBron, none of the games really came down to the wire until Game 7 where both of these adjustments manifested in a championship win. And in the Pats versus the Falcons, Bilicek went to a full-on double team of Julio Jones and the Falcons only scored seven points in the second half. Adjustments matter, and if you can make the right ones, it's only a matter of time and if you have enough. And the reasons why adjustments matter, because parity is a real thing in all sports. You can say refs, luck, choking, adjustments, all of that is set up by one common theme of these sports before anyone takes the field. The teams are made to be as even as possible by complete design. The NHL adapted the salary cap in 2005 and though there have been some repeats in there, 15 different teams have made it to the finals in that time period. 
and two 0 3 comebacks happened during that time, with also two number eight seeds getting to the finals. The NFL adopted the cap in 1994, and of course, you have seen the effect it has had on the league. Though teams have been successful in winning, the games have been damn close, and that's a direct correlation. The MLB adopted their luxury tax system in 2002, and yup, more teams, including small market teams like the Royals, have won a World Series, and though there are still haves and have-nots, it seems like a much fairer system. College football uses a selection committee and arranges matchups like boxing promoters, so you're generally going to see a close matchup in the championship game. And the NBA, of course, has had their cap since 1984, but we all know how they do things. So I'm going to wrap things up and say no, I do not think that these huge comebacks are overtly and obviously rigged. When you add up all the factors towards what can happen in a sporting contest, you can see that you really can't find a trend. Other than one common thread is that we as fans want to see teams stuff their mouths with giant kielbasas and the league knows it. Because without you choking bastards, we might not have anything to talk about. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. And don't forget to download the FanDuel app and use my code SCORE5 to get in on that hot NBA action. I'm 5 Points Vids, and you made it to the end of this video. Oh, wait, you're still here? I should have quit while I was ahead.